I'm very glad to be here. It's been a long tradition. Uh, I took part in, uh, uh, this is uh, my fourth uh, uh, conference uh, on the three avenues organized by Amica. Do the dates, uh, th th are they correct, Marcella? Sorry. Um, and I, I have learned a lot from, from, uh, uh, from you in, uh, in the Czech Republic or Czechia, as it should be called now. Um, and uh, I, we got uh, lots of inspiration for our activities. Um, uh, so, this is the pro program that uh, uh, we implemented since 2009. And altogether, I've been uh, busy with protecting roadside trees uh, for over 10 years. The uh, log in the nature, it doesn't have anything to do with narco business, uh, as it may it, as it may seem. Droga to cesta. One of the things that we did. We planted the roadside trees a couple of years ago, and uh, the problem is that road authorities who are responsible for these trees, they don't uh, take care of them. So I go with the, with the cicator and uh, prune the trees. So I had to, to learn how to properly prune the trees, and I will later tell you how, uh, about the good methods, how to do it. Um, a lot of good work we could do thanks, thanks to a life project, also supported from, from the Poland National Environmental Fund. In the years 2012-15, it just ended. Uh, one of the uh, key activities in this project was uh, working in, uh, in communes across Poland, in every region, where we did uh, inventory of, of avenues, um, demonstration uh, implementations like planting, uh, uh, tree assessment, uh, tree care, and uh, also uh, two-day trainings. On, uh, on how to manage trees. This was all was supported by publication, disseminations, work with the media. This book, Trees in the Landscape, it contains uh, main uh, uh, main points of uh, of tree management. It's it's a comprehensive guide to tree management, managing trees. Uh, around people, uh, not only trees along roads, but all trees uh, around people. Uh, we also support uh, Friends of Trees and Tree Friends Forum. It's uh, it's a it's an event that was already conducted twice uh, last year. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Francis Allais came to our place. I don't know if you've seen a, a film that he made with uh, 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 Luc Jacquet, uh, Once Upon a Forest. I don't know if it was shown in, in Czechia. Hmm? Uh, 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 Professor Ale is, is, a, is a wonderful storyteller about trees. And he knows them very well. Uh, we also ex exchange experience. Oh, uh, Svet Reiter is here, <coughs> uh, showing us uh, a, 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 mil a million euro uh, beech tree. <laughs> uh, a, a tree that was saved at great expense. Uh, here is Professor uh, Dyazivken from Germany. We are, uh, uh, we also traveled to, to Great Britain and exchanged uh, exchanged uh, visits, and uh, we've been staying in, in touch with with our Czech friends. Uh, oh, Marcela, Patrick, 
Uh, uh, <coughs> this project helped us to keep in touch with having new friends across Europe, and we met uh, several times. Uh, we planted a tree uh, and talked at uh, ex exchange experience. Uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the, one of the most satisfying results of of this project was that uh, uh, we created a methodology of uh, tree inspection for Poland based on mainly German and, uh, to some degree, English experience and also inter international methodology of visual tree assessment. And so the, the foundation for sustainable development that, I, that, that was uh, running the project now, uh, now owns uh, a company that conducts uh, the trainings under the brand of the Tree Institute, and these trainings are um, are uh, designed uh, particularly for uh, uh, tree tree officers. That that is people in local authorities that are, deal with trees, and also uh, road services, road service people who who are responsible for trees. Also, arborists come to these trainings, and we have trained already 150 people, and 133 received passed the, the test and final test and uh, certification and received their uh, uh, certification. Now, I would like to oh, where is this? Oh, the book. I would like to. To, to share with you some findings that were put into this little book. It, it was published in English and in Polish. Uh, Trees, a lifespan approach. Uh, this book uh, tells a story about how tree uh, develops uh, from young phase to mature phase to the ancient phase. And what are the consequences for <coughs> for tree care. Um, when we were uh, uh, trying to create a knowledge base about trees, uh, we identified greatest needs in two areas. One was tree inspection, tree diagnosis. And we created this, uh, this methodology I, I told you about. And the second thing, uh, we had the impression that um, um, the knowledge, the general knowledge uh, of uh, of arborists and dendrologists in, in, in Poland about tree care was not sufficient. So we found authors from other countries, uh, a Dutch uh, arborist who wrote about young trees. Uh, Jan Wilhelm de Grot, uh, Professor Dirk Dujasivken from Hamburg, who wrote about mature trees, and two English arborists, uh, uh, Nigel de Berger and Neville Fay, who wrote about ancient trees. As Britain has the greatest number in Europe of ancient trees, and Germany uh, has lots of experience with mature trees, while the Dutch are uh, well known for for well tended, well pruned uh, street trees. So uh, it's uh, evident that when you look at, at the long living trees, the tree changes. When it's young, it grows upwards. Later, it starts developing horizontally, and with with the age, uh, the terminal uh, ends. The upper and lower end uh, die off. The, the top root dies off. Uh, inside the tree, a hollow develops, and the crown starts lowering down. It's called uh, retrenchment. Since I have very uh, little time to tell you all these things, 
uh, let me just uh, mention young. T let me tell you a little bit about this methodology, this Dutch methodology of pruning young trees. Uh, and then, then I will just mention ancient trees. Uh, I found this methodology very practical. I, I had always had uh, difficulty in you know, what to tell a worker uh, how, how should he prune a young tree. And this uh, Dutch methodology is very, very simple and, uh, and uh, easy to explain. So, how to do it? You have to use imagination first. When you plant a tree, which is like three meters tall, it's a tree in a city or a tree is at a roadside, uh, it's, it's not very big. And, it, and as a, a sapling, when it comes from, uh, from the nursery, may look like this. But when the tree grows up, it it has to uh, it has to be clean of of uh, branches uh, because of clearance for traffic. So when the tree is uh, mature, it has this permanent crown. While this young crown is temporary, it will go. Uh, for, for in Holland, uh, uh, a, a typical clearance uh, uh, dimension is 4.2 meters. So, uh, first, uh, when we approach a tree, we identify which part of the ground is temporary and which is permanent. Right? When the tree grows up, it has to be clean of branches uh, for clearance. And all these branches, they don't matter in the end. They will disappear. And then four rules. Four basic rules. We do not remove more than 20% of tree foliage, foliage of tree mass, of foliage mass per one pruning. Uh, maximum 30% if the tree is, is, is very vital. Uh, we, uh, we remove the branches with the largest diameter first. Why? Because in two to three years, when we come back to the tree, this thick branch will be even thicker. And we don't want to leave big wounds. We want the wounds to be the smallest possible. Uh, we do not remove neighboring uh, branches, the branches that are opposite or one above another. Uh, so if there are two branches, we choose only one of them and the, next, the second one goes off when we come next time. And we only remove whole branches uh, in order to be efficient, in order to minimize minimize our uh, our work workload uh, the Dutch recommend to uh, to uh, uh, return with next uh, pruning after two to three years and they calculated it that it's it pays because it saves saves the, the expenses in the future uh, Maintaining a, a, a faulty mature trees is expensive. You have to uh, cut br uh, thick branches. If, the, if you don't remove them on time, uh, later cutting thick branches uh, uh, causes problems, causes safety, road safety problems, because such tree then uh, increases its biological value <laughs> and may become unsafe. Uh, so so the, the touch they calculated that it's, it really pays to, go, to, to return more often. And my colleague who, who is a, a green spaces manager, uh, he also made calculations for Poland. 
and even for covalent it pays. So, how, how we do it? We look at the tree. We first identify the main leader. Yeah, this is the one. We find problem branches. This one uh, is uh, a co-dominant branch. It, uh, uh, it, it uh, tends to, uh, to, uh, to be the rival of the leader. And this one uh, grows very close to another branch and uh, is touching it. We define clearance, 4.2 meters, say. So, this br branch goes, this branch goes, and this branch goes as the one that is the thickest of the temporary ground. No, and this is what, what we have. And when we come next, Next time, this branch will certainly go as well, next time, because this is, again, uh, the thickest one of the temporary crown. <laughs> Ancient trees. Uh, just to show you how it is difficult to predict what happens with the tree? Uh, when we look at, at a tree, it's like a, a snapshot, uh, like, like a photograph. Our looking at the tree, even if we look at, at the tree for several years, it's still like a single photograph in the life of an old oak. So there was a tree in Britain. Uh, over 100 years ago, uh, it was cut uh, for branches, for, for, for firewood, uh, as, as high as the ladder would allow. And then probably people changed to, to cop. So, 10 years later, the tree started growing back. Uh, Adventitious branches grew on the, on the stem. After 40 years, uh, it was evident that the new, a new crown was forming, while the old one was disappearing, was uh, dying off. Let's say 70 years, and now. Looking at this tree now, would you expect this image? Oh, this picture. How old this tree could be? Uh, in fact, this is just a small section of, of a former polar <coughs> tree. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this tree was much bigger and only one section uh, survived. Uh, and it's still growing and it may, be, may develop into, into a full tree. It's, it's a beech tree. So, uh, <coughs> when trees are really become really old, of those species that have ability to live long, like beech, lime tree, or oak, uh, Various things happen with them, and we have to be very careful in order not to uh, not to lose such a tree. Now, uh, a little bit of of politics. You see, in Poland, until the end of last year, uh, it was. Uh, required that every person who, who wants to cut a tree needs to be, be, uh, obtain a permit. However, the current government in Poland uh, is uh, is conducting uh, a revolution on on various in various areas, and that was one of the areas. Uh, now, a private tree owner can cut uh, any tree he or she wants without permit. <laughs> And this is what happens. 
so, in, that, in addition to uh, dismantling uh, the court system in Poland and uh, subordinating courts to the government, in, or, uh, in addition to many other things that, that I personally don't agree with, uh, the government also uh, allowed people to cut, to cut trees at, at, at their will. The, the, the consequence is such that somewhere between million and two million trees have been cut since January. Uh, now, that's, uh, that poses a question. How to talk about trees today? Do you have this book translated into Czech? Peter Wolleben, Hidden Light of Trees? Yes? Yes? Jak to tytuł? Jak to po czesku? So, uh, Peter Wolleben in Warsaw planting a tree in front of the headquarters of the ruling party. Quite a, quite a message. But whatever, whatever the ruling party thinks, we care about what people think about trees. How to gain their heart for trees. And Peter Wolleben found a formula. Uh, which opened up hearts of many people to trees. Uh, and uh, even though I, as, uh, as an arborist, uh, find some of his conclusions uh, quite uh, far going, but uh, what I very much appreciate, he shows that trees are not that different from us. They can see, hear, they have, uh, uh, they sense, they communicate with each other, with one another, and they have social life. Uh, this uh, helps to overcome uh, uh, the problem with uh, 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 that the, the trees have with people. People think that tree, trees are not animated. They may be somehow alive, but not really animated. They are like background. So that's, that's another interesting uh, story to follow later. Now, uh, uh, we are now beginning a new project, Trees for Europe's Green Infrastructure. The project is to improve uh, appreciation of trees in Poland and Germany and uh, uh, improve management. We will be working on, on the guidelines for the tree management. Uh, this project is, is supported without, without the National Environmental Fund because the, uh, the current government uh, withdrew, cancelled uh, a grant from National Funds to us to support this project because we are not well seen. We stand up for nature and, uh, and we, we are not in the mainstream, therefore. So, project partners, Bo and De, our, our, our friends in Mecklenburg, at the Polish organization Ekoinitiativa. A couple ideas. We planted, uh, uh, and I, 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 uh, I also presented this when I came before, we, we planted a transborder avenue between Poland and, and uh, Germany. And certainly there are some places uh, on the border between the, uh, the Czech Republic and Polish Republic where such uh, avenues could be planted and there is even one road that is, uh, goes al along the border and there are trees on the Czech side, no trees on the Polish side. Thank you.